Here are a few tools we may or may not use for this painting. All right, here we have, starting on the left, the three-in-one tool. First of all, it makes a great wide palette knife that really spreads the acrylic snot on the surface. And it only cost me a quarter at the resale store. It's also great if you have a dog that soils the carpet as you can scrape the mishap up with ease and catapult it into your neighbor's yard. Aim for the grill. No need to wash it as everything just slides off due to the hard as diamond stainless finish. But wait, there's more. It's also great for flipping the juiciest burgers that won't taste like crap. But don't quote me on that. Next, we have a standard palette knife loaded with old dried up paint. I'm an artist that identifies by my own pronoun, pig. Alongside a pig, we have the infamous Sharpie marker that my wife used 30 plus years ago on our honeymoon. While I lay naked in the bed snoring, she took the liberty to draw a smiley face on Peter Pickle. It never wore off. All these years later, my yearly physical never fails to produce a chuckle from the doctors and the nursing staff. I get asked a lot for selfies. Pete always looks amazing, the lucky stiff. Lastly, we have a small water spritzer bottle, which I bought at the Dollar Tree. On this painting, I won't need it, so I filled it with gin. I will use it to spray my throat during the talk over, so if I get loopy and start taking off my clothes, you ain't gonna see it, so shut up. The colors we're going to be using today are Mars Black, Titanium White, Fluorescent Pink, Fluorescent Blue, and Deoxine Purple. I'm using a reusable palette which I stole from Hobby Lobby. Now what's great about this is you can scrape the paint off and reuse the palette over and over again. You may wish to use wax paper or a paper plate as a palette. In a pinch, I've used a fine china dish out of Grandma's cabinet. She's old, she'll never miss it, and besides, I'm not in the will anyways. All right, should I start talking in my Bob Ross voice? Is that what you expect? Okay. Today we're going to create a happy little abstract. Whether you like it or not, you'll sit quietly clinging to my every word as I talk about all the fun we can have with palette knives and squirrels and how a little woodland creature ran up my pant leg and almost died and tangled in my hairy leg. He was looking for my nuts, which I kept in my left pocket, making it extremely difficult to pee. Shut up. <laughs> okay, let's face it, the video you're watching is really self-explanatory. I'm old, and I don't have any friends, so as you watch me paint, I'm going to tell you a true story. It's a love story that will make you sentimental and may even bring a tear to your eye, unless your shorts are too tight, in which case both eyes are going to tear. Shut up and listen as I spin my yarn. So, no nitpicking. My girlfriend Sandy and I were going out for, oh, maybe about five years, and one evening that dreaded question came up. A question so frightening that it runs terror down the spine of every single man on the planet. Are you going to stop being a jerk, put the toilet seat down, stop sticking your underwear to the wall to see if it's time to wash them, and get off your lazy ass and marry me, or get out? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That's really a long question, but this is my story, so shut up. Your job here is to watch a boring video of me painting and enjoy it, whether you want to or not. Okay? Okay. To say I was a little nervous was an understatement. I was a confirmed bachelor, and getting married was really frightening. I think it could be compared to being covered in peanut butter and thrown buck naked in a box with dogs who viewed you 
as a human Kong. <laughs> Wait a minute, I actually enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> that, but uh, next time I would request Peter Pan smooth and not the crunchy. No, I guess in a way the feeling was more like playing naked twister with my 70-year-old mother-in-law, knowing that the next spin of the day would find me in perfect view of seeing Ohio, <laughs> the bad neighborhood. You know, where you're about to lose a hubcap. <laughs> okay, even though she was stinking drunk at the time, I could only get her to play truth or dare after that, where I dared her to stop a moving train. <laughs> Needless to say, that didn't work. Well, and she's no longer with us. She actually stopped the train long enough to get on board and now living part-time during the winter months in a retirement community in Florida, having the time of her life playing golf cart bumper cars with all the other Q-tips. <laughs> well, I digress. Where was I? I don't know. What was I thinking about? I think I'm getting dementia. I know, because wherever I go, there I am. Oh yeah, the marriage. How could I... How could I even forget that trauma? More for her than me. Wait for it. And while you're waiting, smack that subscribe button as hard as you used to get smacked at the dinner table for whipping the mashed potatoes and being the instigator of the food fight. <laughs> Damn. Where was I? Oh yeah, sorry for the sidetrack, but I'm old, I'm heavily medicated, and once that Prozac starts wearing off, I go off the rails. Speak about rails. I told you about my mother-in-law, right? Okay, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, getting married. I was literally scared poolless, and the thought was that of horror. It was a spur-of-the-moment decision of marry me or else. Well, I did not know a girl named Else, so I was forced to pick me. But we do think of else often. But we won't go there, unless you're driving. Anyways, Sandy decided the kids should come with. Usually, we would have dumped the kids off to be abused by Grandma, in which they were forced to look at old photos and be lectured on genealogy and all sorts of made-up crap of ancestors. My mother-in-law was known as Grandmama, she was a little bit too lazy to do the real research on a computer, so she just made it all up. It was great because we would get the kids back comatose, and they were as good as gold for about a week. Not this time. Sandy wanted them to witness the biggest mistake of her life. Her words, not mine. She never lied, so I believed her. Anyways... Sandy owned a 1975 Cougar, which was an eight-cylinder car that ran on four cylinders once it got warmed up, which was usually never. But it had awesome air conditioner. That's if it was five below zero and you drove 60 miles an hour downhill through a residential neighborhood, getting the sparks from side-swiping parked cars, generating just enough heat to keep your hands from freezing off. This car was a rolling garbage dumpster. Sandy had two young children and they would go to KFC at least once a week and they would whip the bones in the back seat. If I could have located a homeless guy, I would have treated him to a buffet. Anyways, Sandy's kids from her previous marriage were kind of like my own, and she never wanted to have kids with me as she feared they would be mongoloid. Those were her words, not mine, but she never lied, so I believed her. All the way to the justice of the peace, I prayed I mean, I literally prayed to God to let the car break down. This car was in the shop every week for something falling off, and I prayed this time it would be me. Oh God, I prayed. The seat I'm sitting on has a bad spring. Would it be too much to ask to pop Sandy's spring? I'll even ask her to roll down the window, but you have to give me five minutes warning because the crank is broken on her side. Oh, screw it, God. Just go for it. Do you think God listened? 
Hell no. He was amused and wanted to see how this thing was going to play out. So I swear to you, and God is my witness, those four bad cylinders came to life and that 5,000 pounds of junk accelerated like it was new, catapulting my sorry ass at the speed of sound and delivering me right into the parking lot of the Justice of the Peace. I was a mess. <laughs> When we got out of the car, I swear to you, this is the truth. We had parked next to an exact, identical red 1975 Cougar with white seats and a smashed bumper in the exact place as Sandy's. I was freaking. 30 plus years later, I've never seen another Cougar like this one. God was just being plain mean at this point, and then it started to rain. I figured God was laughing so hard he was peeing himself. When we walked into the court building, there were 30 other couples waiting to get slaughtered like a corral of beef at a McDonald's process McPlant. It was the first time I realized that there were more stupid people in the world and God was creating a laughing orgy that would keep him entertained for years. There was every ethnic group represented, including mine, under the title stupid. Back then it wasn't white privilege, but if the term was available back then, I think my privilege was revoked, and I was so scared I turned so white that I glowed like a wiener in a light bulb socket. Not that I've ever experienced that. Not more than once at least. But I digress. By the way, are you enjoying the painting so far? I hope you're learning something from my artist master class and that abstracts are more involved than smacking snots of paint and calling it art. You realize it takes great skills to be an artist and you hope to be able to sell your masterpieces for $50,000 or more like that great artist Hunter. Trust me. You will, as long as you give the big guy his 10%. Okay, back to the real art, the art of telling stupid stories. Anyways, the court was packed and we were standing around waiting for the cattle call to herd us to the slaughter. Sandy was nervous, so she decided to take the kids outside and have a final cigarette before the execution. I did not object, and I watched her through a glass partition outside, fumbling through her purse a few minutes until she found a cigarette, which she popped in her mouth and lit. She was puffing like a Nazi incinerator, and at that point, I decided to make a run for it. There at the exit was a huge cop with his arms folded. He raised one eyebrow and gave me the stink eye. The look of terror must have been on my face as he slowly shook his head and patted his gun. He reached for his walkie-talkie and he signaled to the fellow cops the words that sent me into full panic mode. We have a runner. Cops appeared at every exit with their arms folded. I have to go to the bathroom, I said and the cop pointed at the door across the hall. I rushed to the bathroom, and there were bars on the window. <laughs> this was not good. I had no choice. I stood at the urinal and soon found myself holding hands in prayer with all the other lads while we peed and did a mass prayer. God listens in numbers, right? Well... I'm here to tell you empathetically the answer is no. We all walked out together knowing the lifetime sentence was irreversible and we had to face it like men. And in our group was one tranny. But we were all brothers in the end. Using the word tranny and N in the same sentence is okay as long as it wasn't my end. We were good. I stood amongst the group outside the court hall waiting as the countdown clock ticked to my execution. Sandy returned with the kids and I gotta admit I felt ashamed. I looked into her eyes and then the innocent faces of the children and realized 
What a jerk I was. Yes, I was a jerk. Thinking between all the guys in the bathroom and me, we couldn't have come up with a better idea on how to rip the windows out and jump. How could I be so stupid? We were motioned to enter the gas chamber, and I took a deep breath and held it, as I knew it would be my last breath as a free man. A few juicy farts from the crowd, and the ceremony began. The crowd turned around to look at me, so I just pointed at the kids. The judge gave the wedding vows, and after the group of I do's, which I just mouthed it because I was too scared to say the words before God, but you know what? It didn't matter. I was married. At that moment, the judge said to exchange rings. Rings? I never thought of rings. Sandy quickly scrambled through her purse and produced two mood rings. I put the adjustable mood ring on her finger, and the stone became unglued and shot across the floor under a heavy set Spanish lady's dress. Sandy nodded for me to get it, but what chance would I have on my hands and knees looking under a woman's dress? I assessed the situation and mouthed, Hell no. I offered to place my mood ring on her finger, but she took control and put it on mine. I watched it intensely to see what color it would change to. I was so nervous, my stone started flashing and made the emergency broadcasting signal. I contemplated doing a duck and cover, but when we kissed, I surrendered. My life has been at gunpoint ever since, but she never shoots, so I'm okay with it. Her mother was mad that we eloped and demanded we get remarried in a church. I was afraid to step in a church for fear I would sizzle. In order to be married in a church, I had to go to a class and get baptized. Here we go again. This time, we were more prepared. We got new mood rings. And after the ceremony, I went down the aisle, clenching both hands in the air, congratulating myself for completing the task and getting sentenced twice. Now, fast forward 20 years. I took Sandy to a swank restaurant where money was no object for our 20th anniversary to celebrate surviving 20 long, hard years. We both agreed on that. So, shut up. The food was great at Denny's that night, and I really enjoyed their Grand Slam breakfast. After the meal, I loosened my belt and let out a loud toot. So loud, the booth behind us thought a car had hit the building. I pretended to be startled, too, so they never caught on. Anyways, I thought this was a good time to come clean about what happened on our elopement wedding and how scared I was. After I confessed the whole story, she looked at me with a blank stare. She looked in shock. Do you remember, she said, how I took the kids outside the courtroom for a last cigarette? She was staring into space. I said, yes, I remember. She says, do you honestly think I was going outside just for a smoke? I was rummaging through my purse to find the keys and remembered you drove. You didn't love me, I said. I must have, she said. I married your stinking ass twice, but I'm not making that mistake a third time. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. As you can see, I'm painting with a small hamburger flipper, which really makes an excellent palette knife. For some reason, being left-handed has always found me having difficulties controlling a smaller palette knife, but with this one, not so. I found it great for moving the paint across a canvas as well as an acrylic on watercolor paper painting, and it actually helped me learn to control smaller palette knives. The effects this palette knife can produce are amazing, as you can use it in many angles to create some interesting effects. 
They sell similar wide palette knives at art stores for around $20. But if you check resale stores, you can find them cheap. I have collected a few of them this way. Let's take a look at the painting for a moment. I want you to notice how I've been holding the brush while painting. I hold it to use the flat side. I turn it to use the side of the brush as well as the very tip. Trying these techniques while applying different pressures achieve different applications and how the paint sits on the painting. If you noticed, I also used the wood end to scratch in lines of interest. When buying a brush, look at the edges of both sides to make sure the hairs are perfect down to the tip. Now I've had amateur artists spend upwards of $70 for a single brush thinking that it will mean they will paint better paintings. As far as brushes go, I've been painting for over 50 years on inexpensive brushes. And I can tell you, it doesn't make a difference. You control the painting, and if you are a good artist, you'll be able to paint good paintings using an inexpensive brush. In the same aspect, some beginners will buy the most expensive acrylic paints. While it might be cool to own the best, if you don't produce incredible work, the expensive paint is not going to make a difference. Remember, Jackson Pollock painted using only house paint in 1952, and house paint was not even close to the quality available today. A few years back, his painting sold at auction for around $150 million. Now, who says you can't use house paint? Stray brush hairs can mess up a painting if you're going for an even edge. On the other hand, if you're painting an abstract and not concerned with perfect edges, a wild hair brush can produce some interesting effects. When I paint abstracts on canvas, I usually use 2-inch chip brushes made of 100% boar hair. I found the more hair that sticks out, the better it works for me. I call this a season brush. You can use smaller chip brushes with acrylics on watercolor paper. I would suggest the 1 half inch 100% boar hair brush. You can find chip brushes in the house and paint section at Walmart for around a dollar or two, depending on what you buy. You will also find them in your home improvement stores as well. If you're going to paint abstracts, you should have a few in your arsenal. With proper care, they'll last for years. I have a few brushes that I've used frequently, and they are every bit of 10 years old, and produce hundreds of paintings. Please feel free to ask any questions in the comments section, and I will answer you as soon as I am able. And I might use your question in an upcoming video called Coffee with Sky, in which I answer questions and share ideas with artists. Some of you may be wondering on how to protect a painting on watercolor paper. An example might be to apply a fixative or a varnish. Well, really, that is a personal call. You have to remember that this type of painting will be framed under glass, which will protect it for many years to come, as long as it's not displayed in direct sunlight. You also have to remember that no painting, whether it's oil, acrylic, watercolor, or whatever medium you choose should never be in direct sunlight. As far as a protective varnish is concerned, I would recommend a matte varnish. You do not want to use a gloss varnish as you will already be getting a certain amount of reflection from the glass. I personally do not varnish my acrylics on watercolor paper, but if this is your preference, before you varnish it, wait to see my upcoming video on an easy way to do this. I break the rules, and it will produce an amazing job. 
Whenever I paint, I usually build my colors and save the white for last, as you can see in this painting. I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, Sky, this is a mess. But this isn't true. Pretty soon I'll remove the tape and you'll see the great reveal. I highly suggest you put the video on pause at this point and hit the liquor cabinet. This way, when you start up the video, you'll see the best abstract you've ever seen and will call the mayor of my town to erect a 30-foot statue of me in a loincloth with a brush. Or, you'll be so stinking lit, you won't care. I want you to try this type of abstract painting. Keep the brush loose and try different pressures and angles as you go. Don't be afraid to take chances. You have to have the mindset that you can never make a mistake. Remember, you can always paint over your painting if the end results are not to your satisfaction. Some of the best paintings I've ever done have been from paint overs. The reason for this is you can play off the textures and create some wonderful effects. Be bold and apply your paint freely, blending your colors on the palette as well as on the painting itself. I said earlier that abstract painting is not about thinking, but more of an expression. Pablo Picasso discovered his inner child, and that is how he painted. This can be a very difficult style for an artist that has been painting for a while as you develop your own style and pattern of doing things. A child knows no boundaries. They know nothing about the thirds rule and how to hold a brush and the taboo of coloring outside the lines. They just do whatever they want to do by creating what they feel and from innocence they can create incredible primitive art that seasoned artists struggle to duplicate. As the child grows up, his perspective changes and the innocent of painting without care soon disappears. As an abstract artist, you should always try to get your inner child and paint without any rules. I'm not here to tell you the rules. I'm here to help you find your inner child. The reason I told you a story while I painted was to get you to listen to my voice and to get sidetracked with occasional laughter, forcing you to observe my painting technique. If you watched the video, you were actually focusing on the painting and the story was to make you smile, showing that you shouldn't take yourself too serious. The idea is simple. I want you to look at how long this video has been playing. If you lost track of time watching this video, this is exactly what should happen when you paint. You should lose your awareness of your surroundings and get lost in the moment and without being aware that this is happening. This is why you should listen to music when you paint. This is the secret place all good artists go and you will feel free. Free your spirit if you just let it happen. Everyone is an artist. Art is about expressing yourself. Art is fun. I'm the crazy painter and I don't want to be like the other artists on YouTube. I'm going to have fun doing these videos and I want you to have fun too. If you like bad jokes, true but highly embellished stories, and want to know some cool techniques and tips that others won't tell you, then stick around. Because I probably won't tell you either. Because I don't like you. But I'm really bad at secrets, so you'll probably be able to weasel it out of me. Oh, and just one other thing, too. Shut up. And now, without further ado, I'm going to reveal what my abstract looks like by removing the painter's tape. A funny thing about doing painting videos, and if you've watched a few, you will often notice the finished results are never what they could be if the artist were painting with the camera off. It reminds me of my uncle bragging about how his grandson, who he claimed 
never missed the ball with a bat, and how he connected every time, knocking the ball out of the park. He went on and on bragging, so a family member decided to give the prodigy grandson a bat and slow pitch to him. Well, hot damn if the grandson wasn't perfect. He literally missed the ball every single time, and my uncle's face was red with embarrassment as all eyes turned to him and everyone had a smirk. The kid was a regular Babe Ruthie as he swung the bat like a sister when she swung her Barbie so hard the head flew off. This happened in 1975 and I never forgot that awkward moment of cringe because I'm old and I remember crap like this as if it were yesterday. At least I'm not talking about bowel movements and how many aches and pains I have like other old people. But if you want to hear about the hairy growth that's on the side of my neck that has teeth and a bloodshot eyeball, please feel free to message me and we'll talk. What the hell this has to do with pulling off painter's tape beats the hell out of me, but having a cringe moment, if the painting looks bad and you're not totally liquored up, well, that's the problem. To be honest with you, and you know I'm a truthful liar, but this came out pretty good, and if you disagree, you didn't drink enough. When pulling off the tape, try to pull it away from the painting. You should do it shortly after you're done painting as you risk pulling off edges of the painting if it is dry. After the reveal, you will notice the edges of the painting came out anything but perfect. There's a reasonable explanation for this, but I don't have one, so I'll make up some crap, and it will be up to you to get a lawyer and prove me wrong. The truthful lie is, it is so simple a six-year-old child would understand. Put this on pause and get a six-year-old child, I need to understand this myself. And I ran out of liquor at the beginning of the video, and now I'm in a panic mode. I hope you are gullible and believe me, because this is the liar's truth from the artist Bible of made-up crap. When making this masterclass video, I prepped a few days ahead with the tape, and on the day of filming, I did not re-smooth the edges. Sometimes, no matter how careful you are, paint will creep under the tape. Am I worried? Heck no. A matter of fact, this is awesome because now I get to show you how to fix the problem. Remember, you can't make a mistake that can't be fixed, and I will take you step by step on how to correct this. Lucky you. Shut up. Begin by using the 4-inch gesso roller we used to prime the watercolor paper earlier and get a nice even coat from your paint pan. I prepared the painting by applying painter's tape covering the inside edges of the painting, leaving the 1.5 inch border fully exposed. When cutting the painter's tape, use a utility knife with a sharp blade to lightly cut the edges so the painting is framed in blue painter's tape. Because the tape will be on the painting itself, it is important to make sure it dries and cures before painting on the gesso border. I let my painting sit overnight, and now that I'm not stinking drunk, I actually love it. You may need a couple of coats, and if you can find a couple pairs of pants, you're going to look snazzy. There's a word you never hear anymore. Snazzy. I'm older than crap, and at my age, I say old stuff, so... Shut up. Let your masterpiece dry between coats. An hour works, or just use a hair dryer and blow the living hell out of the thing. Be careful, or it will become airborne, and if it shoots out the window and ends up high in the sky, our military might think it's a Chinese spy satellite, and you're going to feel real bad if you start World War III and end the planet. I'll laugh my ass off, but others may not see the humor, so be mindful, you wannabe artist troublemaker. 
As you can see, I've begun to peel the painter's tape off to reveal my abstract painting. I'm sure if I did not tell you this, you may have never noticed it on your own. <laughs> okay, the gig is up. I've run out of engaging dialogue, and I'm just trying to make it to the end of the clip. <laughs> I know. Hey, do you want to have a farting contest? <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> it actually bubbled up and tickled my raisinets. <laughs> Enough with this off the rail humor. As I peel the last of the tape off, you'll soon see the finished painting framed. Stay tuned until the end of this video because I'll make a brief appearance with a few closing comments. If you have a few rotten eggs or tomatoes to throw, go get them now. Hey, thank you very much for watching my video. I really appreciate it a lot, and I hope you had a lot of fun, because I did. I enjoy telling stupid jokes and stupid stories, and that's what it's all about, is having fun. Relax, enjoy yourself, paint, and have fun. The painting that we did today was called Falling Waters. Now, if you want to support this channel, you can do so by going over to Etsy. There's a link below. It's called $49 Art. What I'm doing is I'm doing all different types of paintings on watercolor paper with acrylic paints, and there's nothing over $49. But wait, there's more! <laughs> that includes shipping and insurance. So how can you go wrong? But I only ship to the continental 48 states. So if you're out of the country, ain't going to happen. But there's other links below. You can buy me a cup of coffee, whatever you want to do. But main thing, if you don't do anything, it's, it's not expected. It's appreciated. If nothing else, just subscribe. That's all I ask. Anyways, the painting will come with a gold seal, signed, dated, and what it is. And that's Falling Waters. I want to thank you again, and I really appreciate it. Now, next week, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take that painting and we're going to varnish it. And I'm going to show you a secret way to do it. Really easy. And it's foolproof. And you're, it's going to come out great. So you'll want to tune in next week for that. And also we're going to have a lot of crazy tips and tricks. A lot of stuff. Other artists won't tell you. I wasn't going to tell you either. But you know what? I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah, I'll tell you. I don't even like you. But I'm going to tell you anyways. So just subscribe. Okay. I gotta get going. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, bye, and bye. <laughs> Woohoo! Keep smiling, kids. Keep smiling. No, 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 no,